I'm gonna grab this one. Hello, my name is Shelby and I'm a potter. I found this bowl clutter slip casting molds and one by one I'm pouring them up to reveal whatever is inside and then finish it into an artwork. This is the mystery mold series. So let's see what's in today's episode. Hello and welcome to episode one of season two of the mystery mold series. Woo! <laughs> I am so excited to have the series back and I cannot wait to see your reactions on some of these pieces. So I pour this one up. It's a big rectangular mold and it's got three holes on the top and I actually need your help with this one and you'll see in a minute why. I chipped it out. I actually missed the bucket there. Uh, you can't see it, but I spilled clay all over the table. It was fine. I cleaned it up. I opened this one up to reveal a set of three froggies holding onto a branch and these look like perfect little key holders. I'm not sure how they'll go holding keys because they are quite small whether they'll like go all unbalanced but I pull them out and trim them up and clean them up ready to paint. Now I need your help because this is the mold it says it's a plant tender tree frog from Doc Holliday's molds and it's from 1997. So it's pretty recent, but I tried looking up what a plant tender was and I could not find anything online other than tender plants. It wasn't really getting what I was trying to do. And then I was like, plant steak, plant support, plant friend. I tried everything. I then looked up the Doc Holiday mold catalog and found this and it's from the Gone Fishing Collection, but it actually says available in frog bird and dinosaur sounds. Um, what does that mean? Does that mean it makes a sound? Does that mean when you water your plant, like this is where I'm going with this sound thing. Does it mean that it like tends to your plants and lets you know via making a sound that it needs watering? Because that's what I was going with, but I couldn't figure out where this sound would be or whether it was like meaning that it would actually be a sound box and that maybe I was reading far too much into that. But if you are familiar with the plant tender, maybe your auntie has one, your uncle, I don't know, someone in your family has one and it makes a sound. Can you please let me know in the comments what that sound actually is? Is it just a like, you know, those, um, I used to have a family member who had one where it croaked as you walked past. It was like a sensor and it was very annoying, <laughs> but I, I just kind of want to know when I was looking at this, there is like a little indent in the branch. So I'm wondering whether I'm meant to leave it pretty hollow and then put a hole in the branch. So somehow some sound echoes up the piece. I don't know. I don't know. I need to know because I need to know how I'm going to make it make sound. If I didn't look up this Doc Holiday thing, I wouldn't have known any better. But now that I know that it has the potential to make sounds, I am like holding onto it and obsessed with that. So I initially said it would be great for holding keys or something like that. Even earrings or a ring holder, it would be so great for that. But with the name Plant Tender, I feel like it could also be one of those supports for a crawling vine-like plant, like a devil's ivy or even like a Swiss cheese plant. I feel like it could work really well. But then again, it is really light and you can't really put it up any higher. It kind of has to be in a flat base to be able to stand. So that was my other thought around the term plant tender. As for the artworks on these ones, I have decided to go for a full on poison dart frog moment. I am doing a variety of different species of poison dart frogs. And I mean, I looked up poison dart frogs on Google and they could be Photoshop pictures because I just took the most colorful frogs that I liked the most and just ran with it without even fact checking. So if I have done a species that does not exist, we'll just call it art okay and it was not actually maybe it was just inspired by the idea of a dart frog not actually a dart frog <laughs> I have also done a green tree frog before anyone comes at me for that. It is a green tree frog just because we have so many of those in Australia. I just felt like it would be rude not to do a cute little green tree frog. The thing that I was tossing up about was because I'm doing so many different species of dart frog, I didn't want them to all feel very muted and the same in the branch and base sculpture. I'm going to call it the base. So I did a mix of green, brown, yeah greens and browns on those and my one regret is actually not just keeping them all consistent because I feel like it sort of murked the collection a little bit individually they all look great but sitting together I feel like they would have just looked so much better if all the branches were green no all the branches were brown and all the bases were green rather than me mixing it up they just would have popped a bit better but you'll see what I mean at the end 
Every time I do a new mystery mold, I get really intimate with the piece because I spend so many hours on it and I spend a lot of intricate time getting the details and the color in place, as well as pouring it up and discovering it like it's a brand new toy. So I start reflecting and thinking about what each piece means and what I wanna do with each one. Now for these frogs, it, the concept was quite simple, quite easy. Uh, it's not breaking any ground here, but I was looking at the shape of the frog and it kind of reminded me of something that's not a frog. Now, this might seem a bit strange, but I feel like the first sort of cartoon image of an alien <laughs> was based on a frog. I was thinking about it as I was painting these, is that aliens are typically depicted as this like green slimy creature. But that's not the only correlation, right? They also have like these big eyes with a sort of abnormal shaped head. Like they often look like alien heads. And they're also depicted with like a three finger webbed kind of hand detail as well. Cause like when they're doing that peace sign, it, it looks like a frog hand. Was the original cartoon, was someone like, oh, these frogs, they're alien like, let's just base our idea of aliens off of these little creatures that are just just doing no wrong but chilling in these rainforests. I just want to share it with you because that's what I thought about when I was doing this piece. Maybe you can share your thoughts on that with me and maybe validate me or just be like, no girl. These were actually so fun to glaze. I just plonked them all in. It was very satisfying. Enjoyed that plonk action. And then it was into the kiln. Now, just appreciate this for a moment. I actually planned this kiln firing out so that they would all be front and center so that when I pop the kiln open the next day they're all shiny and bright and pop it in your face as soon as the door opens so I arranged them all into space and because they kind of lean forward a bit I was able to tuck them in the opposite way in between each other I mean that's probably nothing that you need to know about but I was just really enjoying how they packed into the kiln so nicely I popped a couple of cow jugs in there as well to fill up the space and then they went into the kiln overnight I opened it up to this impressive array of beautiful popping colors. It was worth packing it this way. They look so cute and so amazing. And what a start to the first mystery mold of the new season. They are so fun. At the moment, I would say that the yellow one is definitely my favorite. You know how sometimes you're just really drawn to a certain color? I've always loved yellow, but I just really love how bold that black pattern is and the contrast of it. It just draws my eye in straight away. I said earlier that I wish I left the branches all brown, and this is what I mean. Like, it kind of dulls some of the colors out, and I feel like the contrast would have been a lot better because I just love the brown. I love how it turned out. I did half and half with brown. I wish I fired some earlier just to see what the brown would look like first because I was just worried they were going to be really dark and I don't know like wash them out but the actual opposite thing happened they contrasted more and I should have known that but anyway I love them anyway they I think they're so gorgeous and on their own they're just beautiful I just think in that cluster you see here or just oh the brown would it just look so much better I love all the colors as I said the yellow is probably my favorite but I think that a lot of these will have appeal to different people's tastes and interests in frogs and especially if you have a favorite species of frog I think that we kind of covered a lot of different types of poison dart here so wrapping up this first mystery mold of the new season I have three questions what is a plant tender and how does it make the noise two is do you think aliens were based off of frogs and three what's your favorite color i want to know what your favorite color is of these frogs that i did this week i mean maybe plant tender means they're perfect plant friends because look at them hanging out with these plants they're so great anyway thank you so much for watching episode one of the mystery molds make sure to like and subscribe for more and here's your sneak peek for the next one